Hello and welcome back to H2O Global News Stream. Today I have a very special guest from GF. This is Mona and she is going to have a really good chat with us about non-revenue water today. Great topic. I want to learn more about it. But first of all, Mona, can you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you. Yes, so thank you very much for having me today. Pleasure. Pleasure for me too. <laughs> so um, I started working in the water industry like roughly three and a half years ago when I joined Geo Piping Systems as a global product manager for water utility products. And um, yeah, today I'm, I'm still working for Geo Piping Systems, but since January as an international account manager, also for utility products. And yeah, maybe a little bit um, to my background. Yes, please. Uh, so <laughs> I, um, I studied industrial engineering and management. And um, at the moment, I'm like expanding my knowledge with a master's degree in part-time, doing in, in business administration, focusing like on strategy and, and entrepreneurship. And yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and so you've been in the water sector for only a few years, the same as me. Um, but I'm sure your knowledge with GF is increasing extremely fast. So today we're here to discuss non-revenue water, as I mentioned in the introduction. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to anybody watching this that doesn't know, um, what is non-revenue water? Yeah, actually, before I started for, I started working for Chief Piping Systems, I also wasn't really aware of this term and, and that is really a relevant topic probably everyone should be aware of. <laughs> so actually, um, water utility companies supplying drinking water to their customers. And from this water, actually in average worldwide, roughly 30 to 50% of this drinking water is lost. And this is basically what we what we mean when we speak about number water. So lost, lost water, and of course, the, the the obvious next question is why why is it important that we talk about this? There are there's a laundry list of reasons why. Um, but today, if you can give me some of the top issues that non revenue water presents the globe. Yeah, so if you can imagine water or like the water infrastructure is getting older day by day so the topic is increasing for water utilities so uh, the water which they lose is also increasing and already today it's like really a significant amount of water mm -hmm. so if you can imagine every year uh, we are losing 126 billion cubic meters of waters around the globe and this is water which is already like produced for people to drink so the this is really a tricky water we are losing. And um, for also for water utility companies, this is um, cost, this is creating cost for them. So here we are talking around like $39 billion also each year, which is lost um, due to the non-revenue water. And yeah, if you can imagine like 126 billion cubic meters of water, it sounds really a lot. But if you can imagine here in Switzerland, we have the Rhine River nearby and um, roughly this 126 cubic meters of water is two times the discharge of the Rhine River. So if you can imagine how, how much it is. And your day to day role is helping utilities to tackle these issues. Yes. Um, we've had a little chat before and I'm it's really interesting to see how you're helping to reduce that non-revenue water. Um, and if, if we think about the world as a whole, how precious a resource it is, this, this is an urgent and immediate issue. We know this. Yes. Um, so can you give me some examples of what you are doing with utilities and what GF is doing as a whole to try and, um, bridge that gap mm -hmm. yeah i think the easiest to explain is by taking some examples and have a look how we um improve those specific examples or help the water utilities companies in those specific um cases and 
And one case I would like to share with you is maybe a case in Italy. Mm -hmm. So in Italy, I mean, we also recently heard it in the news, uh, water uh, is an issue for them at the moment. Mm -hmm. And on average, um, water loss in Italy is around 37%. So really high. And if you can imagine in like in some cities like Rome, so it's even higher. So it's really an issue for them, especially when we think like it's raining less and we really need the water that is lost. So it's really important to to really act here. And so we had one customer, Ireti, it's a, it's a utility company and supplying water to 2.5 million customers with roughly a network of 20,000 kilometers. And they also facing the issue and they really have targets to decrease their non-revenue water level. Mm -hmm. And so they were really looking into technology, how they, they can manage to decrease these water losses. And one thing they are doing is to um, putting pressure management in place. Yeah. So they are trying to reduce their, their pressure in the system. And by reducing this pressure, they can also manage to reduce water loss. And uh, what they did, they uh, were really looking for some new technology when it comes to pressure regulating valves. So this is something where we helped them. So we supplied them our newly developed um, pressure regulating valve. So they did some testing um, because yeah, valves they used before, it's not always easy with the maintenance and, and so on to really keep them in place. Yeah. Uh, so they tried our new one and um, did also some testing in the laboratory to really see how it's working. And um, now they are using our valve and they're really happy. They, they managed to decrease their pressure level on a very stable base. And with this, they, they managed to reduce their um, the pipe breaks by 60%. Nice. So with this also the, the non-revenue water level. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, um, th there are so many opportunities out there yeah. for utilities to, yeah. to start taking those big hits and 60% is incredible. Yes. Um, what, what sort of the timeline is it? A, is it, let's say somebody rings you up and said, yes, we want these in the ground. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to implement? It's depending often what utilities they have several and pressure regulating valves installed so it's a little bit depending if they like yeah how many they have what what analysis also they did so how much they can reduce their pressure yeah. sometimes or often the pressure is quite high and there's potential to reduce but we have to analyze and see also that in the end whether the customers still have enough pressure so it's taking some time to analyze everything and then step by step install these um, pressure regulating valves. Also, sometimes we have to first have a look like this area, we can have this certain pressure, then define another area where we maybe need a little less pressure. So it's, I would say it's a process. And yeah. even when you have installed the pressure regulating valves, then um, this enables you maybe because you have less pipe breaks, because you really have a stable pressure, which is not that high. So then you have maybe also time to start working on active leak detection, like you have resources or like freed up resources that you can use to maybe renew some piping uh, system or have a look where you have some leaks and, and do some repairs there. So yeah, I would say it's really a process day by day improving the non water level. Yeah. And of course, the size of the network. Very <laughs> That's uh, that's one thing. And you mentioned about um, maintenance, that the old valves were heavy on maintenance. Is yeah. that something that your solution reduces? Yeah, absolutely. Like We developed a complete new technology of pressure regulating valves. So um, the valve we, uh, we brought to the market has a complete different design. So it's um, designed with an axial flow design. Yep. And um, also, if you if you would see it like standard valves, they are out of metal and quite heavy, as you can imagine already the insulation. Uh, you need a, a crane and several people to to install it. Yep. And um, due to the technology it's using, it's it's really complex. So it it has a lot of 
pieces inside and if you do the maintenance it's really complicated and um, time consuming yeah. and the solution we brought to the market is really to um, help the water utility companies make it easy for them to use these pressure regulating valves to say it's easy for them to install and also if it's installed in maintenance it's it's quite low so really to free up their resources so they can use their time for something else where they can really actively reduce them their, their yeah, and I think these things are really important because utilities have a big checklist, right? Non-revenue yeah. water and leaks are one massive thing, but also saving time and resources. Yeah. Um, can you put them in the ground under pressure or what? Yeah, they, they're installed in, um, in manholes, let's say. So there are specific chambers, like pressure reducing chambers yeah. um, and where they're installed and also with like some other components like having filter before and some um, flow meters to check the flow, some pressure gauges just to see that everything's going right. So, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. These chambers, yes. Well, that's amazing. Um, keep, keep doing it because, especially in Italy, they they had some terrible troubles last year. But the the we need every drop. We all know yes. this. We need every yes. drop. So it's it's. Unfortunately, it's the utilities that have to take that step, but companies like yours, which are always pushing the boundaries, innovating, going down that checklist, making yeah. sure it's hitting lots of buttons, yeah. it makes a big difference. Um, but do you have any parting words? Anything that you would like to, any wisdom you would like to impart <laughs> on us? Yeah, maybe what's what's really important, what we also try as uh, GF Piping Systems to I mean, we're trying to support the water utility companies with different innovations and with our daily work and the products we're delivering. But what we're also trying is to really raise awareness of the topic. As I said also in the beginning, I wasn't aware before I started working for GF Piping System that there is an issue. And I think um, everyone, not only working in the water industry, but also um, every person when living in the household, we can do something about it. And I think. Yeah, we try to we should try to raise awareness of the topic and really try to think what we can can do about it amazing yeah. i really appreciate you uh joining me today giving us example of your great work um and telling us a little bit more about non-revenue water so let's let's keep um beating that drum keep telling people what non-revenue water is and how we can save each drop so thank you so much I hope you all enjoyed the interview, everybody that's watching. And uh, until next time, thank you. Thank you for having me. Have a good day.